in your geometry class, it's likely you took a lot of time to talk about congruent triangles and congruence and that kind of proof junk and all that stuff, not on the SAT. And in fact, congruence doesn't really show up much, but I do first want to start off by defining what congruence means. And something congruent just means it's equal to something. So if I have two congruent sides, it means they're two sides that are equal. If I, got, if I have two congruent triangles, it means two equivalent triangles. That's all. One important point that does come out of this, though, is corresponding sides and angles. So let's imagine for a second that I've got two triangles which are alleged to be congruent. So I've got that, and I've got this. And this is ABC, and this is D. E, F. So you can imagine that if I rotated this triangle on the right and I lined it up perfectly on this, they'd match. Just because this guy's rotated doesn't mean it's not congruent, right? You say, oh, well, look, this side is not the same as this, so they're not congruent. Well, no, because this side BC corresponds with EF. So the fancy definition, well, first, the, the definition of corresponding sides is basically that two congruent triangles are going to have equivalent pairs of sides and angles. And the fancy definition of this is that corresponding sides and angles occupy the same relative position. Well, I'll explain that in a second, but basically it's, okay, what are the corresponding sides here? Well, AB is going to be the same thing as DE, right, congruent, and the symbol for that is this little uh, equal sign with a little squiggly over it, and that would be this blue side and this blue side, right? They correspond to each other. This side BC is going to correspond with this EF, so BC is congruent to EF. And this little side AC is going to go with DF. So AC congruent to DF. And we could also talk about angles. So this angle BAC is the same one as EDF. And this kind of explains the relative position thing. This angle is the same as this because they're both sandwiched in between the blue and the green side, right? Blue and the green side makes this angle. Blue and the green side makes this angle. So they occupy the same relative position. Um, so therefore, they're corresponding and they're equivalent, right? So this is, I think, very basic and straightforward. I'm probably making it way too complicated. It's just a fancy way of saying you got two congruent triangles or even similar triangles, which we'll talk about in a second. The sides correspond to each other. They match up in some way. Let's move into similar triangles. This is where it kind of matters. So let's imagine I've got two similar triangles. So what do you notice about these triangles? They're kind of the same proportion, right? It's just this one's kind of a blown up version of this. And that's really what it comes down to. So if I label the lengths of these sides, not to scale at all, but I think it'll do the job anyway. Notice that my side here is one and this is two and this is three. It's almost if, it's as if I had blown this up three times, right? Because one times three is three, two times three is six, three times three is nine. So a similar triangles are just triangles that are blown up copies of each other. They're dilated copies in the fancy word. And really this is where ratios and proportions come in again. Because these are in the same ratio to each other, right? One to two is the same ratio as three to six. Two to three is the same as six to nine, and so on. And this is where we can actually uh, do some problems on the SAT with. And we'll see examples of this in uh, the boot camp video, excuse me, the tactics videos, and frankly, similar triangles don't come up much at all, so don't worry too much about it, especially if you're not going for a 700 plus. But let's imagine I had two triangles like this. So I had a triangle like this, and then I draw this in, and I'll label this as 6, and this is x, and this is 4, and this is 5. And I want to know what is the length of this side x? Well, take a look at these two triangles. They both share this angle. Let's call this 90 degrees down here and 90 degrees here. They both share this angle. They each have a 90 degree angle in common, which means by supplementary rules, these angles must be equal. So when you have two triangles with equal angles, that means they're supplementary. They're in proportion to each other. So now we can set up a ratio between the sides using the corresponding sides. So this triangle right here, the one with the green angle here and the 90 degree, has a side of 6 over here. And that is going to be in proportion to this long side here, right? The one between the green and the right angle of 10, right? These are the two corresponding sides. So what about this? Well, this is the base of the side triangle, so we can call this X. And that corresponds to this guy, 5. All right, and now we've got our proportions. We can go ahead and cross multiply. We get 30 equals 10X or X equals 3. So the answer to this would be 3. Right? That's how you'd set up a proportion with similar triangles. You find the corresponding sides, 
and then you work it out.